Okay, welcome to another edition of The Extra Point. Uh, my name is Kendall Gammon. I am joined by my good friend, 24 year? 23. 23, 23. year uh, linesman for the NFL, Mark Hittner, former Pittsburgh State Gorilla as well. Mark, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. I yeah. look forward to visiting with you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. I, I think we really met for the first time, maybe on the field, did we? I, I think so. I'm, you know, I, we used to talk. I yeah. do talk sometimes. Yeah, to the, absolutely. To the like the center and make sure, hey, don't, exactly don't, right. don't be jiggling that yeah, ball. Well, <laughs> well, well, I would never do that <laughs> as a long snapper because I didn't want to get you guys in trouble. Yeah. I will say I was on the training vi video every once in a while for things you couldn't do. So yeah. uh, perhaps I got some people yeah, in trouble you, a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you know that's, uh, and we'll get back to a lot of stuff. But well, let's start with that with the the NFL you've been in for 23 years uh don't even know how many games that is but playoff games you've done a Super Bowl three Super Bowls three Super yeah. Bowls wow yeah. and yeah. um now you are from Kansas City so yeah. do you have a little bit of rooting interest with the Chiefs having well, just won it or uh, is, is that hard it is uh, kind of hard because you know? you're not you're not the only NFL ref that lives in a city right. uh, that has an NFL team. Yeah. So I used to think, well, it must be tough for you, but I'm like, well, lots of people have to be that way. Yeah, exactly. We, I grew up in Boonville, Missouri. Okay. So you know, we were, that's the team we watched was the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. Right. My dad was a big Chiefs fan, so okay. every Sunday we'd watch the Chiefs. But I actually grew up being a Miami Dolphin fan. Did you? Now tell me why, why is that? You know, I, I like their colors. I think, and I love Bob before. Greasy. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Understandable. And, uh, and when the famous Christmas Day game, yeah. it went so long, when the Dolphins finally kicked the field goal, I went outside and, yeah! <laughs> How about that? That is amazing. Um, yeah, that was an amazing game. Oh, my too. gosh, yeah. yeah. That's a pretty cool a few thing. years back. You know, having had a, had a chance to, because uh, uh, Lynn was with that, right? Yeah. Dawson, yeah, because oh, I haven't yeah. had a chance to, to um, uh you know, broadcast with Len and learn from him. I remember talking to him about that and just how incredibly disappointing that was for oh, him. Oh man! Well, yeah, there was a lot of ups a lot and of downs. Oh yeah, that absolutely. Game. And, uh, uh -huh. Yeah. So that I grew up kind of a Chiefs fan, but when I do a Chiefs game now, right. it, it just ends up being colors, right? Red exactly versus right. white, or, mm -hmm. or or the Chiefs yep. are white versus. Right. Orange, yep. the Broncos, and uh, or the Raiders. It seems like I've gotten a lot of Chiefs Raiders games over really? the last few years. Those have to be and, some fun ones. I know oh, I've been yeah. involved in a few, and it's a pretty good time. So, okay, so you're an NFL ref. Let's go back in time a little bit, though. Uh, first and foremost, not foremost, but you went to school at Pittsburgh State University. You yes. were a quarterback there. The Gorillas. Yeah. Go Gorillas, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is the Gorilla edition today for this. It's not always <laughs> that way, not planned that way. But tell me how you ended up at Pittsburgh State. Good good, good story. I, um, well, I was at Boonville. We had a good team. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up winning the state championship in 74. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of kids getting recruited off of there. Missouri was recruiting me. Okay. And... Um, Central Missouri, right, and lot, mostly those two were recruiting me, mm -hmm. but it ended up at the end. Air Force came in and recruited wow. me to come there. Wow! And I tell you, my mom lit up mm -hmm. when when she heard about the Air Force. Mm -hmm. She did all the paperwork. She signed out everything. You know, I took the tests and stuff. Well, I wasn't quite smart enough to get into Air Force. Okay. So I went to their prep school. Okay. So yeah, right out right out of college, I went to the prep school. Or right out of high school, I went mm -hmm. to the prep school, and after about two weeks there, I missed my mama. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yes. You probably weren't the first, nor will you be the last. <laughs> exactly. But interesting. Yeah, and uh, so I said, "Mom, I'm coming home." Okay. So that was you. Know, you'd go there about the end of July, first mm -hmm. part of August. So I lasted about two weeks out there, and. Um, so I came home, then I walked on at the University of Missouri. Okay. Yeah. And I was a walk on the fall of 75. Okay. And I was the uh, eighth or ninth string quarterback. Okay. So yeah. it was the it, it, next man up times four or <laughs> yeah, five. I got exactly. you. Very good. If you rem uh, I don't know if you remember back in those times, but. You could have 120 exactly. kids on You could negative recruit. You could oh. recruit kids from uh, so they wouldn't go to exactly. another school. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. I realized quickly there okay. that I was not going to be able to play. And our coach at high school, Ken Brumley, he had a good relationship 
with a coach from Central mm -hmm. Missouri who had played at Pitt State. Right. And so that coach was no longer at Central. So he hooked me up with Tom Lester. Okay. Down at Pitt. So right after football season, we went, my parents and I, we went down and visited Pitt. And Tom Lester gave me a scholarship. Okay. And so I was just anxious to go somewhere so I could play a little bit. Right, you know, right. Instead of getting beat up on uh, the mm -hmm. scout team, which, yeah, we were just meat for that, for mm -hmm. sure. So so the fall of 76 is my was my first year at Pitt State. Well, I actually went the spring of 76. Okay. And then uh, the fall of 76 was okay. my and first year. Tom Lester was a coach, but then you had another coach as well, correct? Yeah, Tom Lester was actually let go after spring practice. Okay. So Ron Randleman was hired. Right. And he, you know, he'd never seen any of us until we showed up for that first part of August practices, and uh, there was only two quarterbacks, me and Bob Plague, and so we battled it out, and, right. and I was able to beat him out, so I started my first year down there. And, Very nice. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we struggled quite a bit, so. Well, but it, but it counts, but you know what, I'm going to go back a little bit. I, I think, you know, I, I talk about emotional strength and, and, and listening to your inner voice, and, you know, I'm going back to those two weeks when you're in the Air Force prep. Uh, I mean... I, I really, I can't imagine if you were like, okay, I know this doesn't work, but my mom wants me to do here and I'm going to try yeah. to stick it out. I mean, that, that could have been, uh, that, that could have been a, a, just a terrible situation. Oh yeah. I was, I was miserable. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Um, uh, I missed home quite a right. bit. First time I'd really been away from home. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't mature enough at that point to handle it. Gotcha. Uh, I I've thought back, you know, like man, if, if what what would have happened if? if I would have stuck that out, you know, and got a degree with the Air Force Academy, and right. what a, what my life would have been if I would have done that, you know, not right. not regret, just right. What you just if? wonder. Well, yeah. I, I think that's natural though with everything. I mean, and yeah. as we talk about it, you've led a very interesting life for a lot of different reasons. We're going to get to that, but okay. Fast forwarding back to Pitt state. You had Tom Lester. He goes, and then Ron Randleman, Ron, Ron Randleman. I mean, he's a name in college football. This is a yeah. guy that did some good things. Uh, I know you have a lot of, uh, a tremendous amount of respect for him. Yeah, I really do. He was, he was not only a really good coach, he was a good man. Mm -hmm. You know, he, back then, you could get a coach that would just belittle you. Right. That would just, uh, his way of coaching would be to try to beat you down and, and just mm -hmm. to work you to death to try to get you to do what he wanted to do. Right. But Coach Randleman had a different approach, you know, not religiously, but he was a Quaker. Okay. Okay. We never mm -hmm. practiced or did anything on Sundays. Interesting. Yeah. So Saturday we'd have a game. We'd, we'd get Sunday off. All the other guys that mm -hmm. I knew would go in for film or yep. whatever. And he never cussed. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was a religious man, and I really respected him. Very cool. And I think the players did. Uh, mm -hmm. Not that Coach Lester was a bad coach or anything. Right, or right. A, or a tyrant or anything, but... Mm -hmm. Coach Randleman knew how to get across to players. Wow, very and, cool. And, uh, you know, our first couple of years, we weren't very good. Mm -hmm. and then we turned it around when I was a junior, senior, and then he he went on to have a real good team like two years after I left, played for the national championship. Right. And then I think right after then, he went to Sam Houston. And was there for quite a while and was really became a, a bit of a legend at Sam Houston State, I believe. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've had a chance to, to meet him briefly. Uh, you know, I've talked to you. I've talked to some other guys. They just have a tremendous amount of respect for him. And, um, of course, I, I think that was kind of the start of Pitt State football. And of course, I mean, you go back to the 60s yeah, and, right, and Carney right. Smith and what he did. But sounds like you had a pretty good experience at Pittsburgh State. Oh, yeah, and you got your degree absolutely. in what? My degree, I got a double major in accounting and econo economics. Wow. So, yeah, so. well, uh, I, th I think maybe the Air Force missed out a little bit. If you did that, <laughs> you, you had something going on. But, well, uh, yeah, it, it's been good. So um, you leave Pittsburgh State. W was there a point you're like, OK, I know I want to be a, a referee of some sort? Or how did that start? <clears throat> you know, when I was at Pitt State, mm -hmm. I took a um, officiating class. OK. And. Um, so I would do basketball when right. the, when the football season would get over, I started refereeing basketball mm -hmm. 
you know, great part-time job, mm -hmm. got to choose when I wanted to work, and the pay was good because, right. you know, to go to McDonald's or to work at the student hall or whatever was minimum wage or yep. maybe 50 cents over that. Right. Well, heck, I could get 10 or 12 bucks or 15 bucks to work for an hour. And you're like, why not, right? Yeah, exactly. And I liked it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, li I liked the competition. I always grew up with sports. I played mm -hmm. basketball in high right. school. And I liked the uh, I liked the interaction with the with the players, right? And I like the inter. I actually like the interaction with the coaches, right? You know, and I, I like the give and take with the personalities, uh -huh. that kind of stuff. So you know, that, that's good. I think that's a good lesson for people is to you know listen to that inner voice and and follow something that you enjoy as opposed to just following what maybe somebody else wants. Not getting on your mom, but I mean. Clearly, she wanted that more than you did, and, yeah. and then it, it wasn't going to work out. And even here, I mean, it's a little bit different path because you're getting paid a, as an official. But let's let's be honest. I mean, <clears throat> officials get an earful. Oh yeah. I, I think yeah. you know, I always said from my my standpoint, being a long snapper, you know, you can't have an ego and do this because it's snap ball, get crap knocked out of you. <laughs> and sometimes I use a different word for crap. Uh, but I mean, as an official, uh, you deal with a lot. I mean. Uh, did you naturally have thick skin? Did you develop it as you went along? Well, I think that uh, when you, <clears throat> looking back that I, I, I have thick skin. Right. And it seems like to me that I don't get too bothered right. if people are actually yelling at me or mm -hmm. because most of the time in your head, you know if you've made a good call or a bad call. Right, right. You know, and if you've made a bad call, then just human nature wise, I'm sitting there, I'm going to let the coach kind of chew on me a little more because coach, you may have a point there. I'm not going to let him I, know I, that. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's interesting though. You're, you're taking in the sense, you're taking in the information yeah. w without showing them I I any acknowledgement to exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And I think when you really kind of uh, muscle up against the coach right. is when you like, hey, I, I know that call was right. You're giving me crap about it. Right. I'm not going to put up with that. Uh -huh. I, you know, your kid fouled the kid. Right. It's a foul. You know, you want to yell at me and make a little scene here or whatever. That's fine, I'm, yeah. But you're not going to do it very long. <laughs> you know, that's funny, and, and I forget which official it is. I know you'd know him if I could remember his name. I remember in, in one game in the NFL, we, we were supposed to get up on the ball and snap it quickly in fourth down. And of course, you, you, you know better than I, it's frowned upon a little bit. And you, the, the, yeah. the surprise is not supposed to happen. So he hadn't gotten back far enough. And I snapped it. We got a first down and they called it back. And I was just <laughs> giving it to him. I was yelling. And, and I'm not proud of some of the things I was saying. I'll hey. just say that. But in the heat of the battle. But he kept going. He ignored me. He ignored me. And th then finally... After probably 20 good seconds of it, he goes, that's enough. <laughs> and just the way he said it, I was like, you know what? I'm done. Yeah. I said, I understand that we reached the limit. Exactly. I got my point across. You know, you, we'll have a coach just be yelling at you about right. a play or something. And <clears throat> and maybe I didn't have a good look at it or, right. or I was, it was a 50-50 call or right, something right. like that. And the coach is, you know, that you didn't see it all. You That was a horse crap call. and. Mm -hmm. a, you know, finally you go, you know what, coach, you may have a point. Right. You may have a point. And for some Does reason. Does that shut them up? It just shuts them up. Because they don't have, they, they want the argument. Yeah. I think that's a good lesson in life sometimes is when you admit what's going exactly. on. Or you acknowledge their point of view. Yeah. Now all of a sudden they're like, well, I don't know what to yell about now because <laughs> exactly. he said I might be right. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think that diffuses situations a lot. It does. It does. And I've had to use that a few uh, oh, times. Oh, I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> and we'll get into some of those stories maybe. So, but tell me more in terms of, okay, you know, you left college, you're doing it then. I assume you got into high school, uh, got into college coaching, and then to the NFL. But even that's a little bit of a of a, of a different path as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right when I got out of uh, college, I went to work for Phillips Petroleum, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Wow. Yeah. yeah I was an accountant down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, really good job. Mm -hmm. Great area. Bartlesville was mm -hmm. a great place. It's a good family town. But I started doing high school football because right. I... You know, I was out of the game, and yeah, this is know, a way to stay connected yeah, stay with it, right? Stay connected and to make a little money on right. top of what I was doing. Plus, I liked it. I liked being out on the field, and I liked right. the you know. And um, 
So I started doing high school football when I was got out. And I was real lucky. There were some guys in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, took me under their wing. Okay. Took me under their wing as a young official, showed me the ropes, gave me the kind of the mechanics, mm -hmm. kind of the thought process. Yeah. And, and it came easy to me. Right. Yeah, you know, gotcha. I'm able to sit there and look at a football field and as a play goes on, kind of be able to zero in on what I think may be the crucial areas for the, where that play is going to either be a success or a non-success. Right. Yeah, so I did that. And really, nowadays, they're, they're really hurting for officials now. Really? Okay. Yeah, for young officials to get started in the game. Okay. So as a plug, I... I'd love to be able to talk to any young person, oh, absolutely. male or female, that is interested in starting a, to work as an official. Well, and to that degree, if anybody, and we won't give it, if, if you go to KendallGammon.com and the contact submission form, if that's something you're interested in, I will get you, I will get your information uh, to Mark. And so if that's something that it Perfect. sounds like you're interested yeah. in, you know, that, that brings to mind to me, that's, that's a bit of, of, of a pay it forward. It sounds like yeah. you had somebody that was really interested Oh, and with incredible. what you did, and, and you want to help out as well, which I, yeah. I commend you for. Well, but uh, you kept going. So you were in the high school ranks. Yeah. There was, <clears throat> and these guys, there was five or six guys that really took me under their wing. And a couple of them were trying to get into the Big Eight Conference mm -hmm. as an official. Right. So even, I mean, I was a couple years out of college. They started taking me to practices and scrimmages down at Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Okay. Just taking me with them, and I'd work on the field, right? Because they were always looking for guys to kind of work those scrimmages and stuff, and the pay was right. Okay. Yeah, that's zero. nice too. Yeah, it was zero. Oh, oh, zero. Oh, for you, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, and that really got me. I was it, it um, speeded up my ability to officiate at a higher level. I got you. Because I'm yep. doing a Dewey High School football game on Friday or, you know, Friday, and then maybe on Monday I'm going down and doing a JV Oklahoma State So JV the game's quicker game. and you have to oh. – so you're accelerating everything about your whole process, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So I graduated in 80 – and in 84, I was in the Big 8 conference wow. working as and an And for official. those of you uh, younger kids, um, the Big 8 <laughs> is what the Big 12 used to be. Yes. I figure we have to tell some folks. Yes. I know a lot of you know, but just That's, in case. But I, I can't imagine that quick ascent happening in the state. No, it, it doesn't happen as a rule uh, Yeah, Yeah, there's yeah. Yeah, yeah so I was probably. one of the youngest ones mm. to ever be in the, the Big 8. Very so. cool. You know, I was terror, just fortunate, really right. blessed. Right place at the right time, but you took advantage of your opportunity. Yes, yeah, right. exactly. Okay, so you're in the Big 8. How many years are you there? I was in the Big 8 13 seasons. Oh, wow, so you definitely So I did, yeah. I did one year of the Big 12. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. And when they merged, I was still in that conference, so uh, right. we did. I did one year of the Big 12. You know, lots of great stories, lots oh, of I great players. Mm -hmm. I mean, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Colorado. Yeah. That that run, those those ten or twelve, thirteen years there. That was some special times for oh, football. Big goodness. big eight football big was, eight. was it. It really yeah. was. Yeah, OU, Nebraska, Colorado. They Oh yeah. I'd bet half those years was one of them was national champion. Mm -hmm. So wow. it, so the level of football was was right, pretty was high. Pretty high. Pretty high. Yeah, as high as, high as you're going to get in, in the U.S. at that exactly. time. Exactly. Okay, so um, can, can you take me through the process? One, how you got to the NFL. Number two, was there a point in your career in the Big Eight where you're like, okay, I think maybe I'd like to do it the next level? Yeah, that that's. A, I can just about pinpoint the time. Really, I'd like to hear that. Yeah. Yes. So you're in the Big Eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is. Top level, like you're right. we talking about, right. and, and I'm just loving it. You got young kids, uh, really enjoying. I take them with me to games. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, and it was, you know, it's it it just exciting. You know, yep. go to a Nebraska game and your kids to be out on the field. That's and, true. And uh, we had a Colorado game once. I took the boys and my niece. Well, they're down there petting the buffalo. 
you know. So, Ralphie. Yeah. <laughs> was a shout out to Ralphie. Ariel Solomon, that's a shout out to you and Ralphie. Ariel was a Colorado Buffalo on the 91 championship team. Okay. And he was my roommate with the Steelers for four years. So we used to talk about Ralphie and joke, oh, joke about God. that. And of course, he loved talking about the gorilla and, and Gus and everything. So that is very cool, though. Yeah, it was great times, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh so uh, where am I going with this story? <laughs> well, we're just talking. You yeah. remember the pinpoint when you yeah, decided exactly. that, that you wanted to get into the NFL right, and how that right. started? You, you know, when you get started in something, mm-hmm. uh, it, when you're playing junior high football, your your goal is not to realistically be an NFL player. I'm going right. to be in the NFL. You know, you right. might say, say that, that, but you know, you, there's a lot of steps in between that. Yes. And when I got into college football, I never even dreamed of being NFL that was right I mean there was a couple guys from the big eight that got into the NFL Mm -hmm. but it didn't seem like that much of a difference between right man big eight college football is it was high it was high yeah intensity the games were incredible crowds were great Mm -hmm. and so um, I was in the league about seven or eight years and one of the friends that I worked a lot of games with, he got in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. I'm with him every week. and He's gone. And well, he's not that much better official than oh, I am. Oh, very nice. Okay. And a couple of guys downfield were like, they got in. And I'm like, wow. You know, so this and could so be something. So the light went on. You're like, yeah. wait a minute here. Okay. Exactly. You know, so... After I'd been in about eight years, I put my application in, which mm-hmm. you did back then. And what they would do back then is around the country, they would have retired NFL or retired major college officials that right. would scout. Okay. And uh, you wouldn't even know they were scouting you. Oh, okay. So you might go to a Nebraska, Colorado game, and there's scout there watching the officials. Mm-hmm. Uh, they still do a little bit of that, but there's so much video now that... Right. Back then it was... No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was back yeah. in the, the dinosaur ages. I exactly. Know. Golly, can you believe that? It was... I, I can't, no. I, I, I remember that type of film. I'm, I'm old enough as oh, well. So Yeah. It, it's yeah. amazing where we've gone to where now it's high def. And oh. I mean, even with, you know, with the huddle stuff, and you can instantly... You can instantly see the film, however you want, or people can watch. I mean, it's just oh, it's just amazing. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. For instance, back at that point, what they really wanted out of an official was to make a strong, quick decision. Right. Knee down or fumble. Right. You couldn't tell it on film. R- r- hey. Agreed. Go in. Hey, you've got the knee down. Dead ball. You're not for sure, fumble. Just right. be decisive. Right. You know, nowadays it's like, well, wait a One minute. Thing. I got, let me run that through my head a couple times. Right. Did I, did I have the ball coming out before his knee was down? Right. Or, yeah, you've really. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that here in a second okay. because, <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think that's very much worth talking about because that comes to an ego thing, too, I think. Yeah. But, but yeah. keep going in terms of how when you, you put your application in for the NFL. Right. And when they scouted me, I I was an official that was, I would make decisions. Right. And if somebody else was teetering a little bit, I'd go make that decision for them. And that's what they So we'd have a pass downfield and my side judge is looking, well, did he have a foot down? Did he control the ball? And he's kind of looking at me and I'm like, if you're going to look at me, I'm going to come make a decision. Exactly right. (laughs) So... Uh, that's good or bad, well. yeah. And then, uh-huh. then they'd show a replay on TV. Well, it was the the camera was from the other side of the field, mm-hmm. and they're trying to show something on that side, and they're going, "Well, that looks like a good call by that," <laughs> right. you know. Instead of right down the line showing the guy bobbling it a little bit, right, and it right. should have been incomplete. Yep. <laughs> and there was no replay, of course. Well, so, no, not at all. Uh, yeah. So you make a decision that kind of mm-hmm. stuck out or stood out right. when, when I was being scouted. Right. So back then, and I don't know what your timetable was, we had NFL <clears throat> Europe, or yep. the NFL did. It was going on while I was playing still, okay. so I, I remember okay. that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, about my 10th year in the league, they uh, gave me the opportunity to work NFL Europe. 
Okay. Which was just a, a scouting ground for right. well, players. Mm -hmm. Well, and officials, because the NFL yeah. officiating ran Perfect. the... Oh, so we'd go over there, and they had the, the head of NFL officiating would come watch your games. And Interesting. What an opportunity, you know? So, and then after the game... We'd go sit and watch the video with the uh, wow uh, with the head of the NFL officiating, and then man, he could really drill down right to kind of get what you were thinking. Uh huh. Maybe not. You know, you couldn't really tell if I made a great call because, or not because of the technology at the <laughs> exactly. time. You couldn't see, but at least you were getting a thought process. Plus, you're also building relationships yes. that I'm sure served yeah. you well the rest of your career. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. So I worked one year there. And then uh, the next year, I actually got hurt in like March or something. So I didn't work that year. Mm -hmm. Then I got went back and got hired uh, my third year in the NFL Europe. I got hired to be in the NFL. And so. that was 97? 97. And this, yeah. you just uh, com completed your 23rd, 23rd third season. year. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. And not slowing down. I mean, uh, everything I know from you and I, and we talk on a, a regular basis, um, you're still planning to go for a while, yeah. right? Yeah, I'd like to go two or three more years right. at least, you know, and then kind of just see what it Right. See what the uh, what the whole picture right. looks like at that point. You know. I'm I'm curious. So I played in the Super Bowl. I just broadcast the Chiefs Super Bowl uh, yeah. for the radio with Mitch Holtis, uh, and um, I mean it was a great thrill in, in both situations. Oh. Everything. You've done three Super Bowls, right. so you've got me by one. So the Chiefs <laughs> need to get back so I can catch up to you. But uh, what was it like for you as an official? Yeah. Um, I know from my standpoint, I mean, it's just another game, but it's not just another game. Exactly. You understand the gravity of the situation. Yeah, you're right. You know, the games that really <clears throat> seem to um, have more intensity and more uh, finality to them mm -hmm. are the championship games. Right. The a AFC or NFC. Mm -hmm. You're in a hometown stadium. This the team that wins this game goes to the Super Bowl. Right. You know, and those games I've done seven or eight and nine of those games. Wow. So I love those games because that's that's it's, where it's I feel. It's a home feel, team atmosphere. Exactly. Okay, I got gotcha. you. That's where I feel like uh, I, I don't not uh, not the pressure, but actually the pressure. Right. You know, of hey, I, I want to get every yeah. one of these right because Certainly. some team is going to. Well, we know what happened two years ago with right, New, Orleans. New Orleans. I mean, yeah. you're going to get uh, rules changed because of those type of games, right. you know. And that actually happened about 20 years ago in the Giants. Uh, what was Giants San Francisco oh, really? on a field goal attempt? Wow. Yeah, where they had a botched handle of the snap uh -huh. through a pass and to the, the actually it was a tackle number but he was the tight end oh really yeah and uh, uh, it was kind of a mess cool. but, you know yeah. you think about that though does that has that ever messed with you in terms of you know what if i mean i, I mean what you and i've talked a little bit i mean with the replay it brings everything in question. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, they they may get on you about how you're combing your hair. I mean, they <laughs> they, they can check the part out and everything. I mean, exactly. the technology is is amazing. You know, we talk about the thick skin, but I think there would have to be a quiet confidence of listen. I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. And and I understand you're going to look at it. What's what's your reaction to instant replay? Well, that, that's great. When I got in the league, my first two seasons was no replay. Right. So. When they first started it, you know, you're, you're a little hesitant, right. you know, because mm -hmm. back then they could only look at two or three different play situations, you know, right. fumble or catch, mm -hmm. and everything else was just about a challenge. You right. know? And the challenge was they'd show the replay, and whether the fans booed or not right. was whether the coach would challenge or not. True. <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's come a long way since then. It, yeah, it has. It has. And – one thing about I want to get the play right. We, we right. as officials want to be. Right. We don't want to. We don't want the Chiefs or the Niners to be lose something because of our fault. Right. So replays really kind of helped with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it took a couple years for me to get 
used to that to like, man, I, I don't, I don't never want to be wrong. Right. You know, I'm, I don't want to miss a call. Yep. You know, and that uh, speaks to setting your ego aside and, and understanding exactly. it's not about who's right. It's about what's right. Exactly. Which is what I hear you saying. Yeah, yeah exact, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. I would rather the outcome of the play be correct right. than me be correct every time. Mm -hmm. That being said, I never want to make a mistake. No, I, yeah, I, I get you, that. Exactly. Yeah. It, it is humbling. Mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of talks, Lions Clubs, Kiwanis, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I'll look at this banker and I'll go, uh, now, have you ever had like uh, 10 million people sitting over your shoulder and you're approving this loan for uh, $100,000 right. and it, it, you approve it and it goes bad and they're all booing at you? You know, <laughs> that's, that's a nice ever, analogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I said, that's what that's what we have every about every play, really. Well, not to mention that uh, you, you could and I'll help you with this talk, which is you could be. And there's also a person beside you who's yelling at you <laughs> on how you did the signature, i.e. Yeah. the head coach or assistant coach on the sideline, because you yeah. as a head linesman, you're right there and you're getting an earful constantly. Right. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether. Yeah. Yay or nay. Yeah. No, I get exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, we had. A, about three or four years ago, we had a play in uh, New England, mm -hmm. real close, fumble or down by contact. Right. San Belichick's on the sideline, you know, and I'm we're over there with the coach. I said, Coach, right. Uh, if he's down, it'll be your ball, first and ten here at the twenty-eight. Mm -hmm. If the if it is ruled a fumble, which we had ruled fumble, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be. Jaguars ball first and ten here at the twenty-eight. Right. Go, well, there, there, there's no way that's a fumble. No way that's a fumble. And he's looking at it, you know. Right. I'm looking at the balls kind of moving here yeah, a little like, bit. Yeah. Maybe. Let, let, me, let, let them make a decision, coach. Yeah. No way. No yeah. way. If they rule that fumble, uh, I, I'm going to call the office right now. And I'm right. like, well, <clears throat> Coach, let them make a decision. Well, and we already know they frown upon uh, <laughs> cell phones on the sidelines. Yes, so, they, you know, we're just joking yeah. about. Yeah, that, but you you're that. right. Oh, yeah. yeah. We get that threat. Well, yeah. we're going to call out. <laughs> well, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Well, they rule it a fumble. And, right. uh, and it's, oh, my God, how can they? They're looking at it. I'm looking at it. How can we disagree? Right. Well, you've got the you've got the angle from the Patriots' side. Right, right. And they've got, the other mm. team's got it from their side. And, the replay people are looking at it as, all right, right, we can stop action. What actually is going on mm -hmm. here? So, and, and replay, you can't let it affect you. Right. I've had games where I've had two or three. I've never had that many, but right. I've, we've had games where two or three get overturned. Yep. You know, and, man, you're kind of like, uh, this, uh, you don't feel good. Right. You get a little negative. You're right. like, as you said, you're trying to get everything right. All exactly. This, all, yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, <clears throat> it's not exactly going your way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a, a, a golfer out there, a pro golfer that's hooked three and straight in the woods. You're like, well, I mean, I don't know, on the next tee ball, I may want to hit an iron out here exactly. and take a yeah. layup on mm -hmm. this stuff, you know? And uh, that's what you're kind of doing. You're going, all right, let let me just get back to just basics. All right, let me just make sure we got a formation legal. Right. Let's let's just concentrate on what I know. Yeah. And, and just try not to be judgmental. Just let it happen, and let the play come to me, and then just try to make the best decision that I can. And, and I think that's a good analogy for people also, which is just basically trust the process, even when things aren't going oh, perfectly. For sure. It's like get back to the basics of what yeah. you've taught, what you believe, how exactly. it's supposed to happen, and, and you really you have to have that that quiet confidence about yourself, and you have to have thick skin. I think at times, yes. you know, for, yeah, for me as a long do. snapper, I can remember Coach Cower yelling at me my rookie year. I mean, he's he's literally putting you know, the game in the hands of a 23 year old who oh. was playing at a division two school the year before, <laughs> that's a lot of trust or, yes. or a lot of craziness. I don't know how right, you want right, to put right, it, but right. um, I, I think that goes a long way. Now I talked about some of the coaches, you can name names or you can not name names. It doesn't matter. But just in general, because you're on the sideline, you're the linesman. So you're, you're on oh, the yeah. line of scrimmage every time. Right where the ball is. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've always got coaches near you. They're probably in their ears a lot. Talk to me about uh, the coaches who are 
after you constantly as opposed to the ones who pick and choose and yeah. i mean does it I, I, do do some coaches get a reputation of you know what if he's going after me he must have a reason as opposed yeah. to somebody who's like, well, I've already heard he's going to go after me every <laughs> single play if it doesn't go exactly. his way. Is that a fair you, statement? Uh, oh, that's definitely fair. You, um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the coach for the Chiefs, Coach yeah. Reed. Coach Reed. Yeah, yeah. He, he's coaching. He's right. out there coaching. Mm-hmm. So he's really hardly ever in your ear. And if he is in your ear, it's usually a good point. Right. You know, and it's usually – uh, you know, he's not like they're holding every play. Exactly. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah we, we get yeah, that. We, we yes, know that. You're right. Yeah, he might. Hey, our edge rusher, he's being held. Uh, just have them watch that. Right. You know, tell the tell the referee to watch our edge rusher getting held. So really, for people, isn't it amazing how much a sane point or conversation oh. makes a difference as opposed to getting out yeah. of your head and, and not letting those initial emotions control you. I mean, yeah. they have much better. Like, I mean, I, I realize you talked about it earlier, which is either way you're going to walk away like nothing happened, but it's exactly. going to get through to you more yeah. if it's it, said in the sure. right way. For sure. And and that point right there, yeah. instead of, hey, they're holding every play, right? go tell the ref they're holding every play. Right. Well, the next dead ball, I might go into the ref and go, Man, it is a nice day out here today. Do you want it? You want a water? That yeah. is awesome. Yeah, and uh, but I'm in there and I'm yeah. talking to him. The mm-hmm. coach is like, "I hope you told that son of a, you know that I they're yeah. holding it." Yeah. I said, "Coach yes, went in, talked to him. <laughs> he said he's looking, he's watching." Whereas, right. hey, there. Then I might go into the ref. I said, "Hey, coach wants just to make aware." that he thinks their edge rushers getting held every play. Right. And the ref may go, you know what, I'm watching that, and it is. It is close. Yeah, or, it, there's 50-50. I'm 50. aware of it. Okay. I'm aware of it, yeah. and uh, I've talked to the right. to the guy, and he needs to get his hands in a little right. or just let that guy go. It's good. <laughs> I'll go back and tell the coach, you know, hey, I've talked to the ref. Right. They're, we're watching it, you know. That's and, interesting. Yeah. It, the the verbal language and the nonverbal language, mm-hmm. it, it, it's important. You know right. that in everything. Yeah. You know? How about this? We've talked about this before. I love this about the NFL, as, and, and I'm kind of getting on baseball and basketball. But the NFL, I, I feel like it's your goal to officiate the game, but them not notice the refs, as opposed oh. to I see it differently in the other sports. Yeah. And, and I think that's an actual something that's kind of communicated to you all, which I, th- I think is, is very important. Then people don't always remember or realize also you guys are great at every play and you're graded exactly. very toughly. You've got to pass a physical test yes. at the beginning of the year. I mean, this is not just showing up on <laughs> Sunday morning and referee in a game, is it? No, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a long process. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're hired, you haven't made it. That's when you've actually started. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the rules are so they're they're difficult. Mm-hmm. They're very p- specific to certain play situations. Have different rules. Right. A- and uh, so yeah, when you're hired, that's when it starts. Mm-hmm. And when you progress, you know, as you get more comfortable, as you get more uh, more confident in your abilities mm-hmm. and what you're seeing is what's going on. When I when I talk to different officials that are starting, or I'm, where I work with college officials quite a bit. I, okay. I'm a, an evaluator trainer with the Big Ten, oh, okay. Mac, Missouri Valley. Mm-hmm. So I'm always talking with those guys, and they, so you know, on a kickoff or a punt, you know, if you're trying to just, well, all right, well, I'm going to watch this wave of players going down. Well, if you're trying to watch too much, you don't see anything. Right. Well, if you but if you say all right, I'm going to watch this guy on the edge, his block, mm-hmm. and then if he's good, then I'm going to go to the next block inside of him. Wow. Then, then you're seeing something. Okay, then you're so making it, a ruling on something. And is that spelled out? I mean, do they have? I mean, is that or is that just how you? I mean, is that is that your own thing, or is that some things that have been passed down to you? That's been passed down to me. Interesting. And, and it's what's. Once you get to levels like, I mean, high school, you got to watch everything. Right. There's, there's only, only some... four guys out there. Right. Or five, maybe, mm-hmm. you know. 
heck, you've got to watch the tackle and the guard plus your receiver going downfield. Gotcha. Yep. And, you know, thank God for those guys that get 75 bucks to do those games. Right. You know? And, but get back to that, to where, you know, you've kind of refined your craft. Right. To where it's a lot more specialized, to where uh, you're watching the tackle block or the tight end block or the pulling guard block. Mm-hmm. And then once you rule on that block, then you can go to a next block, right. that type of situation. It's, it's taught. Uh-huh. It's taught. But, you know, I can tell you, I can say, all right, Kendall, I can take you out on the field. All right, Kendall, uh, you're going to watch the tight end block here on this uh, mm-hmm. stretch play. You watch tight end block, and as soon as he's legal, then you go to the next block. Gotcha. You'd go out there, and you'd you'd watch that, and then all of a sudden the running back got hit, and the ball's on the ground. Well, you're still watching that block. Right. Uh, Kendall, what do you got here? What? What happened? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But pe- pe- yeah. people don't think that. Well, it's a lot easier when you're not actually doing it. And oh, yeah. It's 2020 hindsight, I guess. Exactly. With, with part of it. Yeah. But again, that's having thick skin. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're still playing. I mean, you're still refereeing. I'm, I'm out of the game, have been for, wow, it's amazing, 12 years now. I've played 15. Ugh. But people always ask me what I miss. And you always miss the checks, of course. But uh, <laughs> I miss the locker room and the camaraderie oh, and really yeah. messing with guys. Does that exist uh, with the officiating team as well? Because you were on a fairly... Um, I'll say famous, fairly well-known officiating team because yeah, Ed Hockley did that. Yeah. I know you guys were close. I mean, he got a, he got a lot of razzing about things. He got a lot of respect as well. I mean, do you guys mess with with each other to a degree also? Yeah, we do. It's got to be fun. Yeah, you got to have fun. There's some guys in our league that don't have any fun, and, I, and I've had guys on our on crews mm-hmm. that aren't having any fun. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, man. Why are you doing this? You're, you're miserable. Right. You know, like you say, we get great at every play of every game. They spend yeah. six or eight hours watching the officials. That's amazing. Like, come on. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, look at this play. He ran off tackle. Nothing really happened. Let's go yeah. to the next play. Mm-hmm. But no, they got to look at it five angles or whatever. I tell you, if you're not having any fun, you're miserable, it's not worth it. Right. It's not worth it. And to your point, you got to enjoy what you're doing. I think right. in any profession that you're in, mm-hmm. you got to enjoy what you're doing. The checks are nice. Right. When I got in the league, there wasn't really that big a difference between the NFL and what college was was paying. Mm-hmm. Now, it's, it's, it's huge. It's, yeah, it's, it's separated a little eight bit. Eight to ten times, eight times as much as wow. what you're making. Okay. Yeah. So it, that's a big difference right. now. But it wasn't that way when I right. got in. Mm-hmm. Very fortunate to be the times that I've had mm-hmm. with that. But I love it. Right. I love, I love the smell of it. Mm-hmm. I love the touch of it. Yeah. I love the competitiveness of it. Right. I, 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 like, the way, I like the way it looks out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like the... The you get a little contact every once in a while. Yeah, I not like on purpose, but it happens. I, I don't mind yeah. bumping into a coach or right. something like that. You right. know, you just you, the right. whole feel of it, the whole right. taste of it. It's just, it's not, it's not on the field. Right. It, exactly. You're not. Thank God, I'm yeah. not getting hit or anything. Like right. That. Yeah. I guess you're on the sideline. <laughs> so you know, you bring up something though that I think is interesting. You said you've got to love it and enjoy it. And I think that's so very important, but I also think you can be intentional about that. But whatever you're doing in life, it's whatever you choose, however you choose to tag something really is going to determine the experience you have with it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, We get guys in our league now Mm -hmm. that it is, it's a good job. Mm -hmm. It's a good job. Nowadays, if you get in the NFL and let's say you were making 50, 60 grand, wherever you were, you could say, all right, I'm 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 done with that job. I'm okay. going to be an NFL official. Right. Well, wait, that just puts pressure on you and your family that, well, wait, man, that tackle, is he holding or not? They're going to look at this. They're right. going to. Well, they, Can't second guess things. No. Mm-hmm. But then you're think you're putting pressure on yourself that, Agreed. hey, this is my job. Mm-hmm. I got to be Right. Right. And you and I both know when you can go out and anything, mm-hmm. golfer, basketball player, yep. 
uh, banker, if when you can be comfortable, when you can be at peace with yourself, mm -hmm. when you can just take a deep breath right. and let the you know let everything happen, mm -hmm. you're a lot better at, at your job, at your occupation, right, and at officiating. You know, yep. it, if you're worried about getting everything right. That's you're going to go wrong. You're going to make some right. definite wrongs. So, well, like, you know, a kicker. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Or absolutely. a snapper, whatever. No, Man, no, I got to no be question. perfect. I got to yeah. be perfect. Yeah. And I always tried to say, I don't have to be perfect. I have to be consistent. And consistency is perfection. Yes. Because even if I'm snapping the perfect spot, I can snap it faster or the spin could be better or all yeah. that stuff. So there's always room for improvement. So, but but if I'm consistent and they can count on me, then ultimately that I, that's what I think you're looking for. Oh, exactly. Oh, that is so true. Mm -hmm. it's, hard, it's hard to get that to a young official anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... We're evaluated so um, point to point to point to point mm -hmm. that you're almost like they're come a little robotic, right. a little mm -hmm. not natural. Right. And you know you're you got that in the back of your head. You're worried about something else. Mm -hmm. The officials that can go, hey, this is who I am. I'm confident in myself. Right. I see a play. I know how to rule on it. I'm going to miss some. Right. You know, and they and you can live with that. The mm -hmm. guys that can live, or girls that can live with that, that's when you really advance in your officiating. You know, I think that's interesting. You brought it up with something. I'm, I'm stretching it a little bit, but I'm very big on the fact of, of, of the self-talk. You know, we talk to ourselves. They say we have about 50,000 thoughts a day. <laughs> you know, let's just say I'm limited and I've only got three or four words of thought. So I'm co close to 200,000 words. Well, your mind hears it. And whatever you tell your mind, it hears. Oh. And, you know, I talk about having mantras. And I have a mantra that I use all the time, that, which is, I matter, I make a difference, and I am enough. And it's not cocky. It's just making me me understand that, that I can do this, that yeah. I make a difference, and, and I'm worth something. And it's made a difference in my life. And what you're telling me there is basically you've got to have confidence in yourself yes. and what you're doing. And, yeah. you know, it's a chicken in the head. Do you have success and you get confidence, or do you have right. confidence and success? Well, whichever way it comes, it's got to come, and yeah. you just got to keep working at it. And that's what I hear you saying. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I. There's dead time in, in, right. in mm -hmm. football between plays. It's dead time. Right. You got a lot of time to think. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Overanalyze my. it. Like what happened there? <laughs> yeah. Right. Sometimes a plays over. You're like, man. The coach is yelling at me about they're holding my receiver. I'm like, right. oh god, coach, you might be right. Exactly. I wasn't well, looking at that. <laughs> not to mention the big board and, oh, and, yeah. and then seventy five thousand yeah. are are scanning what you just did. <laughs> yeah. And and you can't. I mean, you've got an earpiece in your ear because you guys communicate wirelessly, which I think is amazing and all that. But you still hear the crowd one oh, way or the other. Goodness. Even if you if you try to say you don't, you do. I mean, yeah. I did as a player. Oh. I mean, you tune it out when you're really. I tuned it out when I was actually. Uh, snapping and doing everything, but otherwise it's there. Oh, when you when you're down on the field and you know this, and you're looking at there, th right. that's one of the worst angles exactly. that you're ever going to get. Yep. You know, I played quarterback, and you know, drop back to pass, and you're looking, just surveying the field, and you not kind of know one or two areas where you're going right. to go with the ball. Well, it looks like there's a mess out there, and you've got to pick out all right. And, you know, we the Chiefs have a really good quarterback that does this. And there's yeah. all, you know, to get in the NFL, you got to be able to pick out, all right, you can kind of tell which way this guy's going and if, if he's going to break open or not, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's a mess looking out there. Right. With those guys rushing. It is amazing. Well, you know, our angle's not that good. No. Man, if I, I'm sitting there, we watch a lot of video, of course. Yeah. I'm saying, man, I wish I had that angle they're showing from the from right. the sideline camera. I'm like, wow, I would have never missed that. Yeah. Play. <laughs> Do you think that's ever coming that the sky cam is I, part of the officiating? I think that probably someday at some point. Yep. Yeah. I think technology's just going to keep getting mm -hmm. more and more. I think the ball will have different Sensor. aspects, mm -hmm. sensors in it. Yep. There'll be things along the sidelines and the uh, and the yard lines that will, right. like, okay, hey, the ball penetrated here. Well, yeah, I mean, if we can, we can put a man on the moon, we can figure out, we can figure <laughs> out where the ball is yeah, on a exactly. 100-yard field, can't oh, we? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you know, you sit there and, and uh, 
when they get close to the goal line. Right. That's some of the worst angles that we're ever going to get. Right. They go in there tight. There's 22 players in there. They hand the ball off to the fullback. It's just a mess. It's a scrum. It's a mess. Absolutely. And we're like, oh, my God. What what happened? Did he get in? <laughs> we, you know, it's kind of you're running in and you're just praying you know, which I do a lot out there, by right. the way. Absolutely. Uh, Lord, just give, just try to give me a look here, you know. <laughs> and all of a sudden, maybe the ball kind of shows, and you're like, "Oh my God, thank God!" There you know, is. you know. And, and, and but then they show it on TV, and it's like, "Oh, uh, yep, two yard run in, obviously in. Good call there, by oh, bull." Yeah, you know, it, it, I hear you on that one. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I've got a lot of respect for some of the announcers. Uh, that they may disagree, but they're like, you know, you've got to understand that these guys are human and they're trying to do the best job they can. Yeah. The, those guys that maybe disagree with the call, but also acknowledge the fact of, you know what, it's hard out there and they know they're not out there. I, I have a lot of respect for that because yeah. that's all you really ask for, I think, in life is people understanding your perspective and seeing something from your point of view. I think we can all learn in terms of if we can step out of our own shoes and into somebody yeah. else's and understand what they're seeing or what they're not seeing because exactly. they don't have that ability. I think that's yeah. huge. I want to get into to one last, I don't know if it's the last thing, but you talked about uh, having another career. You've you've been in the personal wealth business yes. most of your life. Uh, I was in insurance for uh, about 15 years and then personal wealth, okay. uh, investments, right. advisory, that right. type for the last at least 20. Okay, yeah. and certainly, well, and so certainly you have a business acumen with that, with the, the what you got from Pittsburgh State University, yes. which is great, I think is, is good, but I think uh, something that comes to mind also is the fact that, you know, in talking with you, and I think people can see we have a good rapport, but I mean, you communicate. To me, life is about communication. And exactly. I would think while you have to get the right, I mean, you're not analyzing everything. There, there's big institutions that are helping you with that. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a big relationship business, isn't it? Oh, it definitely is. You know, and, and it's all, it's, it's just not. When you get out on the field, right. you got a relationship with the coach and mm -hmm. the coaches. Yes. Then you've got a relationship with the players. Mm -hmm. Then you got a relationship with each other out there. Right. You know, and, and they're different. Yes. You know, they're all different. And then afterwards you got a relationship with supervisors, with right. uh, trainers, with all kinds of, mm -hmm. and to be able to communicate, it, it's just uh right. vital. Yes. It's vital nowadays. Uh -huh. And uh, I've been blessed with really less communication has been more for me. Right. There's guys that want to sit there and BS with the coach mm -hmm. or become maybe – Maybe a little friendly or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not not as so much anymore. But right. they used to back have in the characters. Day. Yeah, back there, in the day, you, you can't yeah. hardly be a character anymore. Right, right. And uh, so that's kind of helped me through the years, you mm -hmm. know. And, and uh, I like that. I like that rapport with the other teammates that are like mm -hmm. you say. We have we have audio nowadays. Yeah. That five or six years ago came on board, and that's really helped officiating. I, I would think. think. Because you, you're instantly talking with each other. Exactly. And people, a lot of people probably don't realize no. that. But you no. go, you hit a button, and, yeah. and all of a sudden you're live with everybody probably. Exactly. Yeah. And, and actually, replay can hear you now. Uh, wow. So we have a play in, a, in Detroit comes out to punt. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the formation, and they don't have a right tackle, which is not illegal. They may have a, a – Out there. They yeah, may, they may they have, have put formation. him out on, Yeah, they may mm -hmm. have went strong to the other side or something. So I get on the horn, you know, said, hey, I don't have a right tackle. Do we have 11? Do we have 11? And when they're in a punt formation, it's a little bit harder for me to count. Right. You've yeah, got because the, you're on the side. Yeah, you got the ref and the umpire. And the ref, you know, no, no, there's only 10, there's only 10. So I know they have an illegal formation. formation right. Right. Because they don't have they don't have the end covered up with a it's, with a exactly. an eligible yeah, receiver. You gotta have seven on the line. Right. Yeah. You gotta have seven on the line and they don't have seven on mm -hmm. the line. And man, if if I we weren't if I wasn't able to ask that question. You can't call it you can't call it with uh, confidence because exactly. yeah. because you don't have the angle you need right uh, there. That's a perfect example. Oh, uh, we yeah. uh, I may have thrown the flag. Right. And then but then afterwards, I'm like, man, what? All right. Let, did you guys have how many guys did you have on the field out here? Were that legal? Was that right? We had a game. This has been 
15 years ago. We're at the Rams, mm -hmm. the old Rams in St. Louis. Yeah, right, it's They're playing back. somebody, and uh, they come out, and we're in overtime. Mm -hmm. And we don't have replay. No, we do have replay, but it's not near as involved as it was right. then. They come out and run a, a trick play. They overload to this one side opposite from me. Mm -hmm. And so I can't really tell what kind of formation is, whether they've got the tight end covered up or if right. he's not yeah. all, or if it's legal over there. Mm -hmm. So they run, and I'm sure, it's a 40-yard touchdown. Right. Uh, you know, that's just a given. Whenever something's very <laughs> iffy. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yep. uh -huh. it's, you know it's going to be a, a touchdown. So, so they run it. They score. Place going crazy. You know, I'm stopping the clock. Mm -hmm. I'm getting in. I get them in with Ed, mm -hmm. and we have a rookie line judge. Okay. And I said, all right, I only had a guard over here with a tight end. I, it was uh, ba overbalanced towards your side, and we had a rookie line judge. And I said, all right, were you legal over there on your side, Tom? Were you legal? And uh, Ed goes, all right, I know we had uh, a back over there and a wide out. And the line judge, he's just shaking. He says, uh, Ed, Ed, I don't know what I got. <laughs> So we're, we're trying, enough. yeah, mm -hmm. fair enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like trying to make something up. Which I, say, I, 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 say, I appreciate the fact that he came clean. Yeah. Like, okay, I, I don't know. You're right. I, that is, so you're we're, allowed. Yeah, we get the other couple of other officials in and try to piece this thing together. Mm -hmm. So we let it go. Right. And you're like, oh, God, I sure hope that was legal and, and whatever. So you go in after the game, and you have a supervisor watching, mm -hmm. and they come down, and they go, what were you all talking about there? And we're like, was that play legal or not? And he goes, well, I, I think so. Oh, and meanwhile, he had the big – that's <laughs> yeah. interesting. That's so interesting. you really didn't – we didn't really find right. out till you went and looked at the play on video or not. Right. And they did run it correctly. They had a – yeah. Thank they Lord. put a tackle over there. Tight end was – on that end too, and but the wide guy was off the line. Gotcha. So okay. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, you know, we, we've talked a lot, and um, I appreciate your time first of all. But I always try to end with this, which is, you know, it's called the extra point. And I'm curious, is there an extra point uh, that that you want to convey to people in terms of something that's really been important in your life? Yeah. You, I, I say this to a lot of people that uh, your family's just huge when you're gone as mm -hmm. much as we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife, I've been so blessed mm -hmm. to have Rebecca as my wife 37 years now. Wow, that's, that's and awesome. they're three kids, you know. Mm -hmm. They're they've been lucky. Right. You know, they got to do a lot of things because of you. They got to do a lot of do a lot right. of travel. Mm -hmm. uh, they've grown up not being scared to go anywhere, cities, that right. kind of stuff because they've done it. Mm -hmm. and, and they continue to do that. Uh, so I've been very blessed myself. And if, if you do not have a solid home front, mm -hmm. you know, if you're scared to go home because it, your wife or other person's going to, well, you're gone all the time right, and uh, right. can't, you know, not where supportive you of what you're doing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's where I've really been blessed. Very cool. But, but it's not only that, it's all the people that help you. You know, that Along have, the way. It built why I've been able to do what I've yeah, been I, able to do. And, and I hear what you're saying. I think I what I hear you saying is understanding that nobody does anything alone. Exactly. That, that, that having the gratitude for the help that you've got along the yeah. way. You talked about those yeah. officials that had you on Saturdays oh, at college games, your, your home life at being stable so you could go away and they yep. understood that. Um, I mean, it probably goes on and on and on even in your professional life. You talked about at Pitt State and some of the folks. I mean, oh. that's what I hear you saying is yes. understanding that we don't do anything alone. No, we don't. No, we don't. And you know, sometimes people get trials during right. those periods. And you you got to make some adjustments, right. and you run into a, a dead end in one place. You got to make a turn and go yep. a different direction. Uh, but I've really been blessed along the way, and you know, I look back at it, and you look back at yeah. it, you know, and you're like, man, you're living it, yep. and you're just loving it, right? And 
you know, how lucky yeah. we are. We could go back and the list is endless for the people it that really, helped us get really to where is. we are. No, no question is. about it. Well, Mark, I, and you're a good friend. I appreciate it. Thank hey, you for coming Kim, on. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good time. And I want to thank you all for listening. This has been The Extra Point. For Mark Hittner, I'm Kendall Gammon. Take care. Thank you.